hyaline cartilage, H and E staining. The specimen shows hyaline cartilage, the most common cartilage in the human body. Like any connective tissue, it consists of cells and extracellular substance. Mature hyaline cartilage is characterized by the presence of small clusters of chondrocytes embedded in the ground substance, or the matrix. Chondrocytes are mature cartilage cells derived from chondroblasts. Chondroblasts, after producing matrix components and secreted them outside the cell, transform into a dormant form and reside in small lacunae as chondrocytes. Occasionally, more than one, but usually no more than four, chondrocytes per lacuna are observed. This is the so-called isogenous group, formed through division of a single progenitor cell. The free spaces around the cells in the sections are a shrinkage artifact to chondrocytes during slide preparation. In vivo, chondrocytes usually occupy the entire lacuna. Chondrocytes nuclei are small, with diffuse chromatin, often shifted to the edge of the cell with one or two nucleoli. The matrix of hyaline cartilage in H and E stained specimens appears amorphous, translucent, with an almost uniform structure. This is due to the presence of a large amount of chondroitin sulfate-rich ground substance and a relatively small amount of type 2 collagen. This type of collagen creates a net-like plexiform immersed in the ground substance of the cartilage. The distribution of fibers and matrix in the hyaline cartilage is well organized. The intercellular substance that directly surrounds the lacuna is called cartilage capsule. It is characterized by strong vasophilicity, which enables the identification of the cartilage capsule in the presented staining. We should note that the slightly less basophilic matrix clustered around a group of cells creates spherical regions. These are cartilaginous territories. There may be several lacunae with chondrocytes in one territory. The spaces between the territories do not show basophilicity and hence appear brighter in H and E staining. They contain less glycosaminoglycans that stain darker and more eosinophilic collagen fibers. These areas are called interterritorial spaces. Mature chondrocytes produce all the components of the cartilage matrix which they deposit outside the cell. Thus, individual chondrocytes and cartilage territories move apart, enlarging the cartilage area, which is called interstitial cartilage growth. What is also noteworthy in the specimen is the lack of vascularization and innervation of the cartilage. Cell nourishment is done by diffusion of nutrients from the surrounding cartilage, which proves that there is little regenerative capacity and a low level of metabolism in the tissue. The perichondrium is visible in the peripheral area of the cartilage as a clearly eosinophilic layer. It consists of two histologically different layers. The outermost layer of the perichondrium is a fibrous layer, composed mainly of parallel collagen type 1 fibers and single flat fibroblast cells lying between the fibers. On the other hand, the perichondrium layer laying on the inside, adjacent to the cartilage, is a cellular layer in which, in addition to fibroblasts, mainly flat, chondrogenic cells are present. They constitute a pool of cartilage stem cells, from which new cartilage chondroblasts are recruited. These cells divide and produce extracellular matrix components, which results in the deposition of new cartilage layers from the outside. This process is known as cartilage oppositional growth. With age, the volume ratio of collagen fibers to ground substance increases. The cartilage matrix is also degraded under pathological conditions. As a result, the integrity of the elements embedded in the matrix is lost. Thus, the histological specimen of cartilage allows not only to identify the structural elements of the cartilage, but it may be a source of information that is the basement for the assessment of cartilage destruction, both in the case of degenerative changes as well as mechanical trauma and overload damage.